Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Is my favorite actress out of her makeup yet? Out or not, come on in, David. Claudia, not even out of your costume. I'm not getting out of it. I'm wearing it home tonight. What on earth for? It's easier than having to carry it. That's what on earth for. Might I tell you that you're making your usual lack of sense? You might tell me, but I'm not. It so happens that these blue slacks and white shirt belong to me. Oh. This the place closing tonight. Now I have no more use for them. I'm wearing them home with me. Any objections? Objections sustained. No, isn't it simple? Perfectly. Instead of carrying a slack and a shirt home, we'll only have to carry the shoes, the stockings, a slip, and a dress which you wore to the theater. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that, David. You're so brilliant. Mm, think nothing of it. Absolutely. I nothing. just have to comb my hair. I'm right with you. We've got all night, so don't rush. Got to clean all my stuff out of this dressing room. Hey, listen, hand me that little bag, would you? Yes. Um... All over my week in the theater, all gone. Yes. Um... David, don't you see I'm being sentimental? Yes. Oh, you're hopeless. You haven't got one sentimental feeling in your heart. Oops, company. Oh, should I let it in? Of course, it's part of my public, no doubt. Oh, of course, of course. Come in. Oh, Quentin, come on in. I just wanted to say goodbye, Claudia. David, this is Quentin Fales. He plays... You needn't tell me. Mr. Fales was your leading man. I've been watching him carefully. You've got quite a little actress for a wife, Mr. Norton. <laughs> Don't I know it. It was a pleasure appearing in this play with her. A pleasure indeed. Oh, now you've gone and said exactly what I was going to say to you. Uh, may I ask if you're planning to go on with the stage? Well, I hadn't You thought... should. She should, Mr. Norton, definitely. Well, we thought... I'm uh, going up to Massachusetts, <clears throat> near Boston, next week. The play's not completely cast, and if you'd like... Oh, I couldn't possibly. Thanks anyway, Quentin, but... I'm busy solid the next few weeks. Of course. You've probably been offered more engagements than you could throw a shoe at. <laughs> mm, yes, in a way. Any uh, good parts left open? The other woman. A nice part. Well, it's very thoughtful of you, Quentin, but I I couldn't. Hmm. I suppose you are in a position where you can pick and choose what you want to do. I think I am. Anyway, it's been very nice. Good night and good luck, Claudia. See you on Broadway. You might at that. I wonder. Thanks anyway, and good luck to you. He's rather sweet for an actor, isn't he? Snob. No, I'm not. I just prefer husbands. Just don't get narrow-minded. <laughs> Why'd you make up your mind so fast about an offer to go into another play? I didn't make it up fast. Much you didn't. Why shouldn't you? If you if you get offered a good part... We'll discuss it when we get home. You know, sometimes... I think you don't know what you're doing. This is not one of those times. Is my suitcase all packed? Well, you ought to know. You did it. I did? Mm -hmm. My goodness. Oh, am I never going to be allowed to go home? I don't know what your big hurry is. But... Sometimes I think you don't know me at all. Come in. Oh, dearie, I didn't know you were occupied. Gladys, come on in. I'd like you to meet my husband. Oh, I sure am glad to meet you. Say, he is handsome. <clears throat> well, thank you. Good evening. <laughs> I think he's handsome, too, in a way. And tall. Man's not worth anything if he isn't tall. Mm, I know what you mean. <laughs> say, dearie, I don't want to interrupt anything. I, I just came in to say goodbye. It's very sweet of you, Gladys. Um, where are you playing next week? Oh, I'm not. Oh, say, I'm sorry. I'm going to someplace in Pennsylvania. Got a pretty good part. Uh, chambermaid, I think it is. Well, you'll be awfully good in it, I know, Gladys. Look, I was thinking, since you got no more work, if you'd like me to introduce you to my agent... Well, when you, you get back in Pennsylvania... Well, well that might be weeks. And you want to get work as soon as you can, don't you? Well, I'll be busy for the present. Thanks, anyway, Gladys. You know, I wouldn't be offering if I didn't think you had the real stuff. Your wife's really got something on the ball, Mr. Norton. I'll, um... I'll take the name of your agent, Gladys, so in case Claudia decides... Yeah, she probably will, after she's been at liberty a couple of weeks. Here it is, on his card. Oh, thanks. Go on, keep the card. Mm, thanks very much. I ain't being generous, so don't thank me. If your wife and I was the same type, you know, if, uh, if she had red hair, too, I probably wouldn't give her the skin off my nose, so don't thank me. We <laughs> insist. 
Well, I got a scram. Some local color offered to buy me a hamburger. Claudia, kid, be a light. See you first. Oh, me? I don't fool myself. So long, Mr. Norton. Thanks for taking Claire, call Claudia, Gladys. Oh, say, that kid don't need anybody. David, let's go home now. I'd, I'd rather just go home. Sure. These people are all so sweet, so wonderful. Darling, let's go home. The lights are all on. Is everybody still up? I doubt it. It's late. After midnight. You tired? Well, I, I, I think so. I don't doubt it. What a week. It's good to be home. You talk as if you hadn't been here at all. In a way, I, I haven't. At least not the way I like being here. Oh, no front door ever squeaked so beautifully. I wonder why Mama left all the lights on. Oh, she's getting extravagant in her old age. You uh, going right up to bed? My bones wander, but my spirit resists. <laughs> well, what does your spirit want? Oh, I don't know. It, it, it feels kind of lost. How about something to eat? That might help find it. Hmm. Eating's a pretty good cure for almost anything. Let's eat. Hey, the lights are on in the dining room, too. I turn my back and the first... David! I'm coming, just getting some matches. David, look at the dining room table. <whistles> Champagne. Cold chicken, a beautiful salad, a cake, and, and candles waiting to be lit. A feast for a queen. And her king. For me? My gosh. Hey, look, there's a note. Look, to our favorite actress, welcome home. Fritz and Bertha, Mama and Dave. Well, where are they? They told me they'd be waiting up for you. I have a half a mind to go up and wait. Wait, David, don't, don't go. Why not? Well, maybe they'll enjoy the party more, thinking we'd rather be alone. Well, if that's why they went to bed, as much as I love them all, they're right. Why is everybody so nice to me? Ah, madame, your chair. Hey, where are you going? My chair. You're not going to sit all the way at the other side of the table, are you? My place. Oh, fooey on my place. Your wish is my command. <laughs> now, what do you have first? Chicken? Salad? A roll? I'm hungry, but I... I don't feel like eating. It's funny. The table looks so beautiful. The house is so quiet. It's such a handsome ticket. You, uh, you sure you feel all right? I never felt better in my life. I feel just like laughing. Here, laugh on my shoulder, darling. Here's my handkerchief while you're about it. David, I wonder what I'm laughing about. Mm, I wonder. Let's go outside, David, away from this table that looks as if it were for Catherine Cornell or somebody. Sure, come on, let's go out. Hey, what's that box on the console? Oh, it's gardenia. For me? For my favorite actress. I wish you'd stop calling me your favorite actress. That's what you are. Not anymore, I'm not. Well, as far as everybody's concerned, you can be an actress anytime you snap your fingers. You heard Quentin and Gladys tonight. They weren't saying that just to be kind. They had... Absolutely no reason to come in and offer to get you more work in the theater, except they they think you have the stuff. But, David, now, I... shut up. Let me talk for a change. Just because this particular play is closed doesn't mean that your career is finished. On the contrary, it could be just beginning. Darling, I wish you'd let me... I wasn't tell... quite sure just how much this, this whole thing meant to you. Until... Until just a minute ago, when you sat down at that table and started to cry. But I wasn't crying now because of the... my mind's made up. You know what we're going to do the first thing tomorrow morning? The very first thing, we're going out and find out who you should see. Whether you should have an agent or not. And just what the next step is for you to get a part in another play. 
Because, my girl, if that's what you want, you shall have it. We have plenty of help here in the house to take care of things, and Mama and I aren't helpless. And... It's funny, I... I hoped you were. Well, we're not. David, would you really like me to become a famous actress? See my name in lights to travel around starring in plays? You won't exactly star right away, but... No, I have no objections to your leading the life the way you want. That's what it's for. You really mean that? I really do, darling. In that case, everything is settled. Give me that card that... One with the agent's name on it. You know, the one Gladys gave you. I'm certainly glad I kept it now instead of refusing it the way you did. I still can't imagine why you didn't want to take it. Give it to me. Hey. Hey, what are you doing? Tearing this card into hundreds of little bits and throwing them to the four winds. Are you crazy? I'm not, darling, but you are. Do you honestly think I'd rather be an actress gallivanting around the country, living in hotels and, and spending all my evenings in a stupid old theater, rush, 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 and, and never get a chance to be home, alone with you, or take care of my son, myself, or live on this farm, and really live on it? Did you honestly think that? Well, no, I... I oh. Then what on earth were you crying about a minute ago? Oh, darling, I was crying because I was so happy I was home again. Really home. Why, you little fool. And now will you for once tell me I'm your favorite wife, not just your favorite actress. Come on upstairs, darling. I'll tell you. One by one, pleasant services are being introduced in the shops these days. Services that you never had before, like the Coke cooler that's installed in so many markets. When you come to think of it, there couldn't be a better spot for that friendly red cooler. You can stop for ice-cold Coke while you're checking off the groceries. And having Coca-Cola yourself, it will naturally occur to you to take some home for the family. Next time you're at the market, take advantage of this service and shop refreshed. Say, Mr. King, does Claudia really mean it when she says she don't want no agents or anything? Mm, yes, I think she really does mean it. Well, her husband sure is a handsome man. And I guess she's the kind of woman for whom that's enough. Oh, I think she is. Yeah, it would be for me, too, I guess. But the way things are, i got to pay my own way. Oh, I wish you luck for it, Gladys. <laughs> I don't get overpaid. Say, that reminds me... Uh... Claudia feels distinctly overpaid on Monday. That's a new one. But she gets her first check on Monday. Quite an event in the Norton household. Gee, every check is, is an event in mine. Well, see you in television, Mr. King. <laughs> All right. So long, Gladys. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. The parts of Claudia and David on this program were played by Catherine Bard and Paul Crabtree. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.